day each of May. Greetings and salutations, it is once a sunny ass day, and I just remember that I have not yet made a video uh, since I went, I started season 5 of Dexter. So I'm going to do that. I, uh, I, I, a while back I said, hey man, I'm going to do what I call the Dexter experiment. Because everyone, is, everyone I've ever asked about Dexter is like, don't watch past season 4. Um, and that always put me off the show. So I watched the first few seasons with my girlfriend, who was adamant we should watch it. And I, like, I recorded my thoughts, and I was like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this like two seasons at a time, just to see how it goes. So, I finished season three. I'm on like the third episode of season five. So, I'm going to give you my thoughts. And they are thus. Um, so, season three is more about Dexter settling into the role of family man. Uh, well, starting to settle into the role of family man. He's, um, he's very much with Rita at this point. He's, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're he's very settled down. They're going to get married, and the, and the, and the going well there. And, you know, things are a little bit more limited at work because, you know, he's, uh, it's, it's going well. You know, he, he doesn't have dopes on his back, and that. things are going great. You know, uh, he doesn't have any weird FBI hunters on his on his back. But then he, he makes, he, it's kind of weird. He makes a quite a valuable ally through through a series of events that aren't important really. He makes a valuable ally in the form of like. The, Miguel um, who comes to, you know, over, turn, over time learns that Dexter is uh, a serial killer, but like he's got his re he's got his reasons. He understands that this guy. Okay, so this guy goes after the bad guys, and this guy is like a real Harvey Dent, you know, like pre Two Face Harvey Dent, kind of vicious, but kind of like vindictive. He's just like he does. position of power, you'd like to think, like, unofficially, you'd have this guy, this sort of urban vigilante in your back pocket so that, you're, you know, your your goals are one and the same, so you'll, you'll chase people through the official means, and then you've got these guys, you've got this guy who chases other people down, which is fine, but then it gets, it, it escalated, we get out of his play by Jimmy Smith, and he's really good, because Jimmy Smith is a, He's a charismatic, charismatic motherfucker. You know it. You've seen that in The West Wing. You've seen it. You've seen it in fucking episode two, man. And he's great in Sons of Anarchy as well. Um. So yeah, that. Uh, but and that was fine. But it's just as the relationship goes on, you find out that you you find that he's kind of obsessive, and he's got this darkness in him. Sort of more so than Dexter. You also find out that he's been manipulating Dexter from the start to get rid of like political enemies and I mean obviously those in his past in the path of his career. So he's not that much of an angel and also he took you know, Dexter he was like an understudy to him. Um Dexter taught him he showed him how, he showed him the rules, he taught him the code and then it, it turned out that you know he, he killed he took an innocent life just because this woman got on the wrong side of him, basically. Um, Why this guy? What, what's his deal? And as time goes on, you think, oh, he's just a just another dose, all right? Um, so yeah, season three, fine. Miguel Prado's good. I like. There's a really one of my favorite Dexter moments, and again, this is when Michael C. Hall sells it. Is uh, anytime, anytime he has a genuine human moment, because he's playing someone with. With severe, like not not learning difficulties, but he, he's he's definitely on the aut autistic spectrum. You can see that in his feelings and how frustrated he can be and things like that. So there's a moment when he realizes. Oh, first of all, it's like is this family keeping him back, or you know the family that he's surrounding himself with, all this camouflage. This isn't his true self, but what you know what's the value in it? And then he realizes just when he's about to be murdered that he doesn't want to die. He wants to live. And he's not thinking so he can keep killing, but he's thinking because he he admit he wants to be with his family, he wants to marry Rita, he wants to spend the rest of his life with these kids. 
and that that comes to him in a clear moment. He's like, they, they, I, I need them. I need they. they. I, I, that was, a, I think that was a really strong. That comes in the finale, and that's cool. Um, so yeah, that that I like that. There are some things I like about season three. Season four, though, yeah, everyone was right. John Lithgow shows up right from the off. We see John Lithgow as the Trinity Killer. He's basically Dexter if he'd been Dextering for uh, for about thirty years. He's like. Senior Dexter, um, but he's a bit colder than that. Well, obviously, similar to Dexter, the tragedy struck him at a young age, and he has he has his own code. He has his own process. Uh, when when he comes to murdering people, it it happens it happens in threes. He's so captivating. I mean, I not for any disrespect to John Lithgow, but I can't watch him without thinking of. Uh, Harry and the Hendersons. I can, I can only view him on screen so for so long before I'm like, oh my god, ah, is the Sasquatch gonna come out and like rip his head off? No, it's not. That's not. That doesn't happen. Um, and he's kind of. We find out over time that you know Dexter's like this guy. He's got. He's got it perfect because for the first couple of episodes you hear, oh, he's a loner. He's alone. He's. He's. You know, he's completely unattached. That's why he's able to do this. He's a drifter. He's able to go around and you know just from state to state and make these make these killings. Um, so yes, excellent, excellent. Uh, and then as it goes on, we find out, wait, he's not alone, he's not unattached. He does actually have this sort of seemingly perfect domestic bliss of a life. Uh, and that just surprises Dexter. So he, he, he infiltrates the family and he comes to know this guy through a pseudonym. And uh, again, John Lithgow is an excellent sparring partner to Michael C. Hall because he can be very, he's got this very like sort of upbeat, uproarious tone and his voice is just so just so loud and, and happy but at the same time he can be really cold and chilling at some times. There's one scene um, towards the end of the season where so we find out that, this, that his family are actually terrified of him. They're frozen in fear. He's got a daughter who's 15 who he makes, you know, he, he in her eyes He'll always be, she'll always be like seven, and he makes it that. So he, he has locked the door. He's just, he's, he's kind of a monster to them, um, and it just not escalates. When there's one minute where he's looking at his, his wife over the dinner table and he's like, "Shut up, cunt!" And you're like, "Fuck!" That just, I, I sat up. I was like, "What?" It's just so vicious, and it's just served with such vitriol. It's just, mm, love it. He's actually brilliant. Um, so yeah, season four. A he's a great sparring partner for Dexter. Um, more so than what we've seen before. Every other enemy that we've seen with Dexter, they've they've seen. Uh, you know, his his nemesis up to now have been like uh, kindred spirits. This guy, yeah, he's a serial killer, but he's, he's a lot cooler and he's a lot more savage. Um, so that's cool. So that, yeah, it's definitely worth hanging around to season four. Finish season four. Season four ends on such a climax, such so out of left field. I had to pause I, before I started season five. I was like, wait, when, what, ha, when, what, what? Um, it, it it baffled me. Uh, I, had, I was I was like, when did this happen? When when did he find the time? He did find the time. He did like the yeah. Um, I mean, in case you haven't realized by the way, absolute fucking spoilers. Rita gets murdered by the uh, the Trinity killer, which I kind of saw coming a little bit, but be by the time it, it seemed okay. We see that obviously by season four, Dexter's a full-time dad. He's wondering how he can go about doing it. I can go about being the serial killer, but also being the family man. And short answer is, you can either be one or the other. It's it's. It's hard. So season five starts off on a gloomy note, but I'm gonna get into that on another time. Season four of Dexter, excellent. Season three of Dexter, okay, not, not bad, not terrible. But it's gonna be remembered for season four. They really struck gold with uh, with that casting and that storyline. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit tentative about season five. I don't know who you're gonna to top that. I don't know who they're gonna draft in because whenever they get a guest star, they get a good guest star. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on season three and season four of the, of this. The Dexter experiment continues. If you agree with any of my thoughts, then please click like, subscribe, you share, comment below, and all the usual jazz. And I'll see you when I see you YouTube. Adios.